Well, hey friends, welcome to um, Wednesday. Yes, oh, it is Wednesday. It is. I feel like, I don't know, this week just started off without me. Oh, And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's already halfway through the week. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready for this. <laughs> it is true, though. It seems like it went fast since last week. And well, because we had, like, the polar vortex last we week did. and everything was off. Yes. And I think that just, it takes me a little while to... Yes. Get back into a rhythm. But we survived. We did. Yes. It, it was fun. It was fun. It was just disappointing to have Bible study canceled last that week. That part was disappointing. Yeah. That's not what I was saying was fun. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring this thing closer. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's but, a good idea. Um, the kids and I, we were able to be outside once it warmed up a little bit. Okay. Um, and it was just fun. And then this weekend was beautiful weather. So. It was. It felt like spring and most of the snow is gone now. So, yes. But I did miss having you guest teach at the church. That would have been nice. I know. (laughs) Yes. But you know what? The Lord is in control. He knows these things. He does. Um, But really appreciated your sharing last week, Mm -hmm. Ashrita, and have received so many positive comments about it, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard from a number of women, even this morning, that, you know... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really see that. But then after listening to you share, I think a good number of women dug back in uh, to take another peek. Uh, well, so. that's an answer to prayer because I, you know, I always want teaching to point us back to scripture mm-hmm. um, and make you feel like you're equipped to mm-hmm. dig in and do that. So mm-hmm. thank you. That blesses yeah. me. Good, good. It should. Yeah. Okay. So what are we doing today then? Well, um, I thought since we're still, you know, we kind of scaled back since all of the Bible studies were canceled, we thought, let's just sit in chapter three for Mm -hmm. a little while longer. And today at church, we did just a pinch of an overview of chapters one through three because we're halfway done now. It's not hard to believe. I feel like I know. I went fast. I know. So just a real. I don't know. We could, we could do a real quick review, or we could just talk about Paul's prayers, too. Can we do a little of both? Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'll of take course. one of each, please. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, okay, so I pulled this out because I wanted to show, as we talk about a review, um, I know you've mentioned the Bible Project That's before. right. Yes. Um, oh, it's like a little mini it one. It is. Yeah. So if you go to thebibleproject.com, you can find um, overviews for every book of the Bible. And they do these really cool like graphic videos mm-hmm. sketching out like the structure of the book and calling attention to some of the literary devices that are used that really help us interpret it well. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what I did for Ephesians is I went and they have these, they're absolutely free, you can download them. And then I stuck it inside my Bible on the Ephesians page. So then um, years from now when I reference back, I'll have like the visual overview of the book. Um, But you can see here, this is why we wanna do an overview because chapters one through three is like a section and then four through six is another section. So right now we're right in the middle and I think it's the perfect time to do I think an so overview. too. Thank you for this reminder. Yeah. Yes. Bibleproject.com. Yes. I highly out. recommend. Yeah. So just reviewing Ashrita, like this whole this whole first section is so beautiful, isn't it? One through three. Mm-hmm. And a very high, like, I think the scholarly term would be Christology. Mm-hmm. Uh, Study of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, boy, I feel like I've said, um, very many <laughs> times. <laughs> I'm just... Okay, we're among <laughs> friends here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that grace. Chapter, chapter one of Ephesians. Paul just, he starts out really, I think we talked about God having this plan and how he wills and chooses and purposes and calls us to himself through Jesus Christ. And I know I was kind of just thinking back through and remembering some favorite verses. Mm -hmm. And so verse four from chapter one was uh, even, well, okay, starting at verse three. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, mm -hmm. even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So Paul really just reiterating this plan, God's plan, and then going into his first beautiful prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else that you remember from chapter one? Um, here I am saying, um, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a bad influence. <laughs> I think, um, what I was thinking as we're going back to the beginning of the book is some background. And I know I shared this yes. in our small group. I don't yes. think we talked about it. Ladies, if we already talked about this, let me know that this is like old news. I don't think we did here. Okay. Yes. Um, but I'm fascinated by, okay, what's the context Mm -hmm. that Paul is writing mm -hmm. this in. Okay. Um, and in my study of the Bible, one of the things that stood out is that Paul visited Ephesians, or the Ephesus, the birthplace of the Ephesian church, um, during his second missionary journey. Mm -hmm. But he went there with Aquila and Priscilla, mm -hmm. which I didn't know before mm -hmm. I studied. But mm -hmm. Aquila and Priscilla are known as a power couple, if you will, mm -hmm. that um, were partners with Paul. They were tent makers just like Paul was. They mm -hmm. worked together. Um, I imagine they had lots of great conversations about Jesus and also about everyday life. And um, in Acts, we're told that they actually confronted someone else who was teaching about Jesus but didn't quite have it mm -hmm. all squared away. Mm -hmm. And so they're this beautiful model of discipleship. And Paul leaves Aquila and Priscilla behind in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Which I like, how cool is that? <laughs> I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like a piece of the puzzle. And then going back in the book of Acts, um, we learn, and this is, well, it's throughout, because Paul talks about it, the gospel and including the Gentiles. But then in chapter 3, he also talks about what he suffered yes. for them. But yes. this idea that the Gentiles are included in the family mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. um, is kind of what got him in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, in Jerusalem, he went back down. He um, was welcomed by the church. Mm -hmm. uh, he witnessed what God was doing and they rejoiced. Mm -hmm. And yet they also encouraged him to not be a stumbling block for the Jews in Jerusalem and asked that he would purify himself and go through certain rituals, which he did. Mm -hmm. um, again, just showing the love that mm -hmm. he had for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and maintaining unity right yes. yeah yes. I think sometimes it's easy just like as an aside it's easy for us to pick a fight yes. for the sake of freedom mm -hmm. um, and yet we see Paul saying I'm not going to use my freedom as an opportunity to make someone else mm -hmm. um, stumble in their pursuit of finding Jesus Christ we should hold on to that for next week because that whole idea will come up in Ephesians chapter 4. Yeah. So, okay, a little bookmark that. Taste. Yeah. And so Paul does that. He, he goes through these rituals and everything, but he also had brought someone from Ephesus with him, and he had been worshiping in the temple, and people thought that he had brought this Gentile into the temple, which would have been against God's old covenant rules. Mm -hmm. um, and the the crowd stirred up trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and Paul landed in jail. Mm -hmm. And that is actually, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is like the prison sentence that ended up leading him to Rome, which led to his execution. That I, I don't know. I, I'll take your word on that one. I should, I'd have to go back and, yeah. and dig on that. But Yes. I think absolutely. from from reading, this is kind of the, mm -hmm. the trajectory that we're headed with Paul. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's interesting when Paul later says, I mean in chapter 3, that he says it's for your sake and it's for your glory. Mm -hmm. Paul was directly saying, like, it's someone from your hometown mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. at the center of this controversy, and yet there was no bitterness. Mm -hmm. It was his privilege to suffer mm -hmm. for the sake of the gospel so that the Gentiles might be welcomed into God's family. Absolutely. And so it's from that place in prison that he then writes this epistle mm -hmm. to the church in Ephesus, to the mm -hmm. Ephesians, mm -hmm. and kind of addresses in chapters one through three this big gospel story yes. that from before the beginning of time, God mm -hmm. had planned this, but it was a mystery people mm -hmm. didn't know. Mm -hmm. And now it's revealed in Christ mm -hmm. that Gentiles are welcomed into the family. Mm -hmm. Beautifully, uh, like a beautiful summary. And thank you for sharing that context too. Wouldn't it be nice to 
Like, we need to study Acts as well. Yeah. I, I kind of like that with Galatians, that you had to start there. And Yes. And I know, like, you don't want to make the study too long. But on your own time, go back to Acts. I might drop those chapters in the comments so that you can yes, go directly I'm forgetting there. forgetting if it's 19 or 20 or 21. Somewhere in there, I think. I think it's 20 and 21. Okay. You keep talking. I'll look it up. <laughs> Okay, so that that's perfect. So then, and 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 um, okay, it was it was um. Now it's in 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 in, <laughs> in chapter two. A couple things that I pulled out I is you. yes. Go ahead. Okay, she finally got her thoughts together, and I'm like, wait, it's okay. <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> Okay, so he had started in Ephesus in his second missionary journey. Then he went, third missionary journey, he went back to Ephesus in chapter 19 of Acts. There were miracles there. And then he moves on. Um, In 2017, he says goodbye to the Ephesian church. Um, And we see this foreshadowing Mm -hmm. of um, he will be chained up. um, And he says goodbye knowing that I probably won't see you again. And then he sails on, and in chapter 21, verse 15, he's seized in the temple. He's at Jerusalem, then he's seized in the temple, um, and that is that is it. That is then, the last one. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, so from that point on, Paul was no longer a free man. Mm. Um, from that point on in his ministry, mm. he is imprisoned for mm-hmm. Christ. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, Nikki. No. Going no. on to chapter two. No. <laughs> Go read Acts okay. 19 through 21, 22. It's just a fascinating backdrop for Ephesians. I would agree. Yes, yes. We probably should have started there in the very beginning, but... Okay, we yeah. have an extra week. This is a great thing to do this Okay, week. that's true. Yeah. So, what do we say? At chapter 1, Paul really, he reveals this plan. Chapter 2, this is clearly the gospel message. Mm-hmm. I mean, he started off strong. You are... You were, you were dead in your trespasses and sins, and but now saved by grace. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And just this, um, just this beautiful picture. You might remember, I should read it. Like, okay, but God, verse four, you were dead in the trespasses and sins, but God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, um, and goes on to talk about just how we're lavished Mm -hmm. in his love and his mercy and the riches of his blessings. So, loved this chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then the the imagery at the end of chapter two, that we are a building, Mm -hmm. a temple being built up, Mm -hmm. um, that we're all little pieces of it. Um, This is a big theme for Paul, that yes, our faith is personal but it's not individual Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and I love how he keeps coming back to that theme again and again I do too yeah and I think we'll see that a lot towards the end of the book Mm -hmm. as well along and one more thing in chapter two was just this idea of us being his workmanship Mm -hmm. God's workmanship um, and that he had has given us good works that God prepared beforehand for us. And so I think that is sort of the segue into chapter three. Then. Okay. Um, because you see in chapter three, Paul begins to share about his own work, the work that God has given him to do, mm-hmm. this message that he is to declare to the Gentiles. And so it's like here in chapter two, he's saying we all have this work to do, but in chapter three, he kind of zooms in on the particular work that he's been given to do. Can I just say, I feel, though, that he got distracted? Do you? Like, I, do you? Okay. You don't think so? Okay, because you read at the end of chapter 2, like, he talks about we're all being built together in a foundation, the temp, holy temple in the Lord, in whom yes. you also are being built together yes. into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles... And then there's the stash, and then he picks it back up again in verse 14. He says, for this reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I read a few commentaries, and I felt this way as I was studying mm-hmm. that verse um, 15 kind of flow, 15 through 21, kind of flow out of the end of chapter 2. Yeah. And if we understand, like, this is before 
word processors. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a writer, mm-hmm. and I write, <laughs> and sometimes I have another thought, and I can put it in there, but then I go back and I edit it, and I, like, cut this whole chunk, and I move it mm-hmm. somewhere else mm-hmm. so that the flow kind of mm-hmm. makes more sense. But mm-hmm. Paul was dictating right. this. So it's like, I don't know, talking to Siri, I guess? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> verbally processing, and it, it, it reads as a... A pastoral letter but also in some places as a sermon mm-hmm. and and we see this where yeah you know we'll be talking about something and then oh yeah I wanted to say that mm-hmm. so it's kind of like this aside mm-hmm. and then I go back to my original idea mm-hmm. um, and I just think that might sound like a rabbit trail but I think it's so important to understand the deliverable like the, the way it was delivered in being able to interpret as well. Mm-hmm. So you're right. Mm-hmm. Paul was talking about, like, these are all the good works we were called to. Mm-hmm. We're being built up in a temple. And he knows he wants to get to this prayer that he wants right. to pray for them. <laughs> right. But then he's like, but wait, I need to tell you. Like, yes. this is what God called me to do. And I am I'm thrilled to be an ambassador for the gospel. Yes, I agree. And it's so interesting that you share what you share because... I remember studying with a group of the small group leaders and they all felt like he just went off on a rabbit trail right here. So I do, I I want you to know, I do see that too. I just, I guess I see also where it fits here. Mm -hmm. So, Well, but doesn't our mind work that way? Like it does fit in. It wasn't the continuation of the process. (laughs) It's how I would say something probably. Absolutely. Oh man. But it just be encouraged as you're studying. If you feel like, well, this doesn't fit in, like, mm-hmm. why are we here all of a sudden? Yeah. There might be some of those subtle clues as you look at, you know, the, the bigger context. So or true. in this case, how mm-hmm. was the letter written? Mm-hmm. It wasn't Paul writing down mm-hmm. with a quill. He was speaking mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So that, you know, that pretty much summarizes these first three chapters after Paul does his little, I don't know, maybe call it autobiography and Mm -hmm. his role or the works that God has given him to do. He goes into this beautiful prayer, which wraps up chapter three. And then we'll see next week that the whole letter takes a turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the way I'm thinking of it in this again, is from the Bible project that I was watching to kind of set up um, the study. Is like one through three is God's story. Mm-hmm. It's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And then chapters four through six are our story. This is where mm-hmm. we come in. Mm-hmm. And so based on the rich foundation that we have in who Christ is, all the riches going back to one three, yes. every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, we have all of this. Now, how do we live? That's right. And I think that's so important as we go into the next few chapters Mm -hmm. because a lot of these passages have been taken out of context and abused Mm -hmm. to um, excuse all kinds of behavior that do not line up. That's so true. With who we know God is. Yes, yes. And so I think it's really critical for us to understand one through three, Mm -hmm. understand our identity and who we are and the Mm -hmm. the blessings Mm -hmm. and the riches that we have Mm -hmm. and knowing that we go into four through Mm -hmm. six Mm-hmm. with all of that richness. Mm-hmm. Now and, then, this amen. is how we live. Amen. And I, I, it's going to be an exciting turn, Ashrita, because this is how we want to live. Like, God has raised us up with Jesus Christ. Now, our actions, our lives, our walk, everything should come up to that level. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be good. could be convicting. It is convicting. <laughs> If it's not convicting, (laughs) have a little chat with the Holy Spirit as you read. (laughs) Yeah, no, like every every single day, just um, spending time with it. With I I told you I'm a a bit ahead, but Mm -hmm. just spending time with the Book of Ephesians. um, Time in God's Word is always time well spent. Mm -hmm. There will always Mm -hmm. be something Mm -hmm. to understand, Mm -hmm. Um, and if nothing else. I think one through three might be easier for this, but the question, what do I learn about Jesus, right? Mm, yes. Um, one through three might be easier. Four through six, it's still there if you look for it. Very true. There's always something to mm. dig out, mm-hmm. observe, interpret, and apply mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yes. 
I, you know, um, I just left from meeting with a group of our small group leaders and we, we do do a week ahead. So we were just talking chapter four. It was convicting, mm -hmm. Shreda. It was it, it it was a very very fun discussion. So I'm excited to keep moving forward. Be good. Yeah, just maybe one last thought is addressing Paul's prayers. Mm -hmm. um, I almost I know, and I don't need to say it right here on camera, but I'm pretty close to having the one in chapter three memorized. I'm Yay! really thankful. You know, I shared this with you. I've struggled partly because it's a different version mm -hmm. than I originally learned it in. So it's, it's starting to sink in. Good. Maybe by the end we'll have it. But this beautiful prayer, um, I speaking of conviction, I've been convicted just by Paul's prayers. And um wanted to talk a little bit today and just, you know, I'd like to talk to you about it. How do we, it's so easy in our prayer lives to just uh, sit in our circumstances. And Paul does say, we'll see when we study Philippians that we can pray about everything, mm -hmm. right? So there's no, there's no big rules on it or anything like that. But his prayers are so rich. I feel like his prayers come from this place of he knows who he is. He knows who God is. He knows that he's seated up here with Christ. And so I feel like his prayers have that sort of a view where he's really praying for the inner, the inner beings mm -hmm. of his loved ones, of mm -hmm. his flock. Uh, he's not, we, I don't think we see him pray over their circumstances. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Which mm -hmm. is, um, I feel like when we share prayer requests with one another, um, within Bible studies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so how do we come up to Paul's level on that? Yeah. Well, I feel this could be a whole conversation in itself, but like, what is the purpose mm -hmm. of prayer? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and it's not informing God of our needs. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, if it were informing God of our needs, then yes, you would bring up, well, mm -hmm. you know, the baby's not sleeping, this person's having surgery, this person's going through a hard time in her marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's important in this type of relationship, right? Because right. you can't read my mind. Right. <laughs> you don't know what's going on unless I verbalize it. Right. But when we come to our Heavenly Father, it's not that He doesn't know. Um, and so I think it's taking that broader view of what is prayer. It, mm -hmm. It's conversation. I think it's processing Mm -hmm. some of the things that are happening mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also agreeing with what God says about the circumstance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some people use the phrase you, you know you remind God what he said I don't think it's so much you remind God of what he said as much as you remind yourself amen to that I think yes. Anne Voskamp has this term soul amnesia we all suffer from soul amnesia and mm -hmm. I do the Israelites mm -hmm. did in the wilderness mm -hmm. like the disciples did in the boats mm -hmm. they were sinking <laughs> or they thought they were sinking and Jesus mm -hmm. was sleeping like yeah. don't you care it's yeah. like he had just fed like right come on right um right. and yet we all do that and I think mm -hmm. prayer is such a great opportunity to remind ourselves of what is true mm -hmm. about God what is true about us what mm -hmm. God wants mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. so hey <laughs> Oh, that's probably our key. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> um, all right. So we could go on. And we on could. On with prayer. We could. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today in this discussion. Actually, it was fun. Krista, thank you for joining us just now. <laughs> Can you thank say bye-bye? Have a great day, ladies. Bye. bye. <laughs> okay, wait. Oh, here. Can I get it? Thank you.